hi. There she is. There's the popular girl. <laughs> hey. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. You have enough water in that uh that canteen you have? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. gotta go camping later. <laughs> it was literally I could. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, Paige, thank you for sitting down with me. I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, I saw your, uh, your 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 TikToks, and uh, mm -hmm. you know we're the same age. I'm not well versed in TikTok, uh, so I felt that it was my duty, my net like necessary to sit down and talk with you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how much I know. That's. <laughs> I feel like there's so much I don't know, but you know, let's 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 get into it well i mean you know you're doing uh, uh these things all the time i mean it doesn't seem like you're you're posting at like just crap all the time you're just, you're posting substantive you, you know uh videos when you can and when you get the chance uh i just why why did you choose tiktok as that platform i guess because it blew up in what uh three or four years ago and, mm -hmm. uh, and that was just like the the good thing to jump onto mm -hmm. yeah definitely i'm it was during the pandemic and mm -hmm. I was, you know, performing a lot live before the pandemic right. and was just sort of craving the like performance aspect and didn't really have the opportunity, you know, like everything shut down. Um, and it was just sort of a way at first to work through writer's block. Um, I was in a sketch team and having a really hard time coming up with anything because just the lack of inspiration because due to the lack of, you know, interactions and just like life in general um in 2020 so that's sort of how it started yeah where were you performing where like were you doing improv and stand-up or, or did you have one focus um it was mostly just sketch comedy um I was performing a little bit with improv as well actually at that time so just like comedy clubs around LA you know um yeah okay well mm -hmm. where where have been some places that you you've enjoyed I West Side Comedy in Santa Monica um, is probably my favorite place I've ever performed at. It's um, I also used to intern there um, in exchange for improv classes. So I got to know a lot of the the staff there and just everybody. I've never come across uh, or I haven't come across a community like that in mm -hmm. a comedy club in L.A. Like everybody's just so supportive, so nice, genuine. Um, whereas I feel like other places it's easy to feel like it's a competition. Right. Um, so yeah, there it's very much, it's very supportive and like the family vibes is really warm. So, yeah. and the, the club itself is just like a really fun stage to perform on. That, that, uh, that family community and aspect, is that a reason why you feel a lot at home with sketches? Is, is that why sketch is a good place for you to be? Yeah, definitely. I love I love sketch. I've, you know, been studying it and writing and performing it for a few years. It's probably my favorite because um, the group mind that you get when you are working with this group of people mm -hmm. for so intimately and for so long, it's just, it's really fun. And it makes even bombing on stage, like fun kind of, you know, whereas yeah. um, stand up, if you're bombing, you're by yourself. And, oh, it's just easier to feel like isolated when you're bombing by yourself. So it's fun to perform and, you know, sometimes do badly with like your friends and you come off stage and you laugh and giggle about it. And then you get to, you know, like take it in as information and hopefully grow from that. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely the family aspect of sketch and the group mind of it is something I really, really love. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy that, that group aspect too. Uh, I work at CNN right now. And uh, I'm in a control room with a bunch of people who, quite frankly, they come in every day and they go, this is going to be the shittiest day and it's going to be such a bad show. And I'm in there. I'm like, hey, man, regular people are going to be watching this across the world. We're going to have a mm -hmm. great day, even if it's a bad show. I don't yeah. really care. And uh, and they like I love like it's a serious job, whatever. But I love <laughs> not taking it seriously because, yeah. you know, we we have. You and I and uh, 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 Shaq and other people in this industry, we have the greatest jobs in the world. And we, yeah. we, a lot of people take it way too seriously. And we, we should be thankful and that we can just 
make these silly jokes on your case and me tell the news <laughs> yeah. and, and, um, and uh, like if I could if I made a joke that'd be bad um but uh but like it's it's so great to after the fact just kind of you know laugh about the like failing on stage and, and you're mm -hmm. right being a stand-up and failing is a lot different and a lot harder than being with a group of people and failing because then after the fact, you know, I imagine SNL, if there's a bad episode, they all, it's 1 a.m., they go to the cast party and they're like, hey, that sucked. But you know what? <laughs> we we hung out with, uh, 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 I don't know, Miley Cyrus today. <laughs> and uh, uh, who else is famous? Uh, uh, Dolly <laughs> Parton was there. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 a lot different and it's a lot more fun. And um, yeah, you, you can't take this stuff too seriously because I mean at least for me like for my mental health like I can't do it it'll get too mm -hmm. dark yeah. so um you know approaching things with like hopefully like being taking it seriously but not not too too much do you know what I mean like yeah, being yeah. able to laugh about something is really important I think What's the, uh, so you, you mentioned you had writer's block and, and that's why you uh, swerved into TikTok. What does your writing process look like? What, how do you, uh, be it for a sketch or be it for stand up Cause you also do do that, but, and then also for uh, a TikTok things, how do you, how do you approach taking on each one of those uh, pillars of your comedy? Um, a lot of it is observational. I feel like I get a lot of in inspiration just from my day-to-day -day life and, observing things or interactions at a coffee shop or you know the grocery store and go from there it kind of I feel like my writing process is kind of all over the place I don't know if I have ever approached something the same yeah you know what I mean I'll have like an idea for a punchline and then I'll work backwards from there or I have an idea of a character and then I dive into what would this character say how would they handle this situation and a lot of it is improvising um I take a, yeah, I use improv, improv a lot when mm -hmm. writing. It just helps, especially with character work, um, being able to improvise. That's why I also love having like that group of other comedians and, you know, performers because being able to improvise with somebody just, it's so helpful with, um, you know, exploring like a new character or a new joke. So, yeah. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I definitely, uh, we have similar ways of, of tackling things. Mm -hmm. Um, for for me, I write down a lot just in case. You know, uh, speaking of SNL, I mentioned them pre previously. Just mm -hmm. in case they uh, they want to hire somebody randomly, but who who's <laughs> doesn't do comedy, <laughs> um, and uh, and and uh, they're like, you know what? He might have some sketch ideas. I have. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Uh, no, I have. Uh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> just a, a slew of sketches at the ready to go. Um, uh, uh, and I, and I, and I like that. I like that, that yours, but also yours are so very, uh, and that this is not an insult, but they're very simple. Like they're yeah. like, this is an observational thing where, uh, this, this girl is popular or this, this one is just wants to, uh, show off their boots. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun. It's funny. And, it, and, it, and it, it's a part of, I, again, I don't go on TikTok, but it's a part of TikTok that I think is missing, uh, a lot on that platform. I mm -hmm. like to, I like things that are silly, you know, mm -hmm. it's very, yeah. it's very silly and very uh, engaging for me. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. I think that's like been a, the really fun part about social media and doing comedy in on social media. It's uh, the attention span of everybody. is like definitely shorter than, you know, it keeps getting shorter. So being able to make those simple jokes within like 30 to 60 seconds, it's really fun. And I feel like um, it does help with, the the longevity of being able to consistently post you know because that mm -hmm. can get really that can get really tough if you're you know diving into these um insane or like really in-depth jokes and stuff I, it, I don't know the simplicity of it makes it really fun and quick and digestible I think so yeah. that's been a really fun part of it too yeah I've always wanted to know uh what is it like 
asking a friend or a roommate to to help you shoot something because when because when when you when when you're on TikTok when you're somebody who you got you can set up a camera you can put it over here and you can do your thing mm -hmm. uh versus hey can you get behind the camera and do some zooms and you know play off of me like how does that work for you is that that like do you just have a bunch of videos that just didn't work because uh your friend Stacy was not funny enough <laughs> Uh, yeah. And yeah, that happens a lot. So, I mean, not to be, you know, sorry, but my sister, she, <laughs> I, when I ask her to film my stuff, she just, she's not a performer at all. I mean, well, she's mm -hmm. a musician, so it's a very different and it's probably partly my fault because I'm not, um, being clear enough about my vision of the joke or like the video. And it just, I'm just like, this is sorry. It's and editing it. I'm like, it's not going to work, mm -hmm. but I, I got really lucky. I um, met these two girls, Caroline and Vienna, and we film a lot together and they're both um, on social media. And okay. so we help each other. We get together like once or twice a week and we help each other film uh, videos. So that is really nice because it doesn't feel like I'm like, excuse me, can you, yeah, you know, can you please like uh, film this for me? And it's, you know, we're all helping each other out and it's really fun. Um, However, when I don't have them around, it can get it can get tough and awkward, and then I get nervous, and I'm just like, eh, never mind, never mind. I'll do I'll do something else. <laughs> so <laughs> it's weird, yeah. It it, it can be it can be awkward for sure. That that's the life of a a person in in comedy where they'll do the wildest thing if a camera's on, but if it's off, it's like I don't know if I should. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't know, guys. Maybe <laughs> maybe I don't know. Um, you were saying earlier that you have just like a bunch of like sketch ideas. Do you have, do you have like notes, like in your notes app, just like oh lists? My God. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have to, I have to show you this. This is, this yeah, let is, me see. it's so, it's so stupid. Um, So <laughs> I started this in 2016, apparently, but there's just a crap ton, everything from 2016 up until this is the most recent one. So wow. it's literally just, a, if I get an idea, I'll just write it down and you see yeah. how long they are. I'll just no, write it down. Of course. Like this one, uh, here's one, uh, Doc McStuffins gets sued for malpractice, <laughs> which I think is a funny idea. You know, That's hilarious. Uh, I love uh, that. Like one of my favorite things is in the middle of the night, I'm sure you do this. Like you wake up with an idea and you just like mm -hmm. type it in your phone really fast and you fall back asleep. Yeah. And the next morning you go back and you're like, what? Like what <laughs> yeah. was that? And in the moment you're like, this is genius. But yeah, I have so many where it's just like typos and I'm just like, I have yeah. no idea what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's so funny. I love that. There was a period in time. So that I did that once with my phone, uh, mm -hmm. the, like the, like, the, like maybe like after like uh, four or five times of that with my phone, but one of them I wrote down, um, if Vin Diesel was a scientist, and I remember waking up laughing and thinking that I was like, like, he's like, he's just, he's just like tiny glasses on. And he goes like, we have to put in the beaker and we have to, we have to put in the, you know, it just, oh, and I, and I oh, thought genius. that was the funniest thing in the world yeah. at you know, two, three o'clock in the morning. But then I said, I don't want to look at my phone in the middle of the night. I'll start writing things down. And I can't remember the sketch for the life of me, but I had a post-it note and a pen next to my bed mm. and I. And I woke up and I wrote it down and all it was, was just scribbles. It was like yeah. Donald Trump's <laughs> signature. It was the worst thing. So I've since yeah. moved back to my phone. And now if something comes up in the middle of the night, I'll just write it down immediately. Yeah. I was going to say, I, that's impressive that you were able to like write in the middle of the night. Cause I would have done the same thing. There, there's no way there, yeah. I can even type on my phone legibly, you know, in the, in the middle of the night. So it's like, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, I but I I still I love doing it. And that's why I yeah. have uh, seven years worth of <laughs> material lined up. Lot. You know, I, I also uh, it's a lot of it is the the more recent stuff, the more recent years, rather like 2021 onward, I'd say are funnier versus anything, you know, 2016 to 2020, because, you know, we we there's more forms of comedy out there and, mm -hmm. and, and we're able to to take in so much more. So yeah. I, I think that I've really honed, even though I've been doing this for 10 years, I think I've honed my skills in the last three or four because uh, I'm just a much funnier person. I, it's a yeah. humble blog. <laughs> no, of course. Duh. Yeah. Come on. It's true. And I think just like, you know, your voice changes as you get older. It's like mm -hmm. constantly changing. Puberty, yeah. Yeah. That too. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we've just like, as a world, like gone through so much in the past four years and it's just really like... Yeah. And with social media, it's created um, a space for, for everybody and every mm -hmm. type of comedy. And, 
and stuff like that's what I love about social media. It's like the space for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did when did you think that you became funny? Like when did you like become <laughs> comfortable on stage? That was a strange okay. way to phrase it. Yeah. When did you when become did you comfortable become- <laughs> on stage? <laughs> um well I I did musical theater um growing up starting when I was like 13. So I was doing like community theater. So I was, and even before that, I was a competitive gymnast and that in its own way is a performance, you know, for competitions, you're out there performing by yourself. Um, So I feel like I've always been comfortable like on stage. However, when it came to comedy, I don't really think I felt um, funny or capable of being funny until like my junior year of college. Um, wow. Yeah, I was in a play in college and I had this like comedic part. And I remember the first time I got my like my first laugh on stage, I was like, oh my God. Like it was like, <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. And so from then, you know, I got into like more of like the writing part and so on and so forth. So yeah, I don't think I got comfortable being funny on stage until much later. Yeah. That I yeah, it's it's different for everybody. And mm-hmm. uh I'm it's better, I think, that you found it as an older person, as an adult, someone over 18, because when you're when you're like say six, seven, or eight, and you find out you're funny, and then you're chasing that high for yeah. the next 20 mm-hmm. years, it, it gets to be kind of uh grueling for you, but also uh it stinks for the people around you because you're like forcing, you're like you're like 13 years old and you're you're forcing like your your sock puppet jokes right. onto them. Yeah, absolutely. It, it could be exhausting. I can't imagine. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't think I was funny when I was young because <laughs> who knows? Who knows what that would have looked like. What kind of uh, 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 plays did you perform? And was it were did you musicals and and what are what are your favorite plays that you enjoy watching? Um, I love musicals. Like I'm such okay, you know theater geek. Yeah, Broadway. Like I love all of that. Um, I just recently saw Book of Mormon on Broadway, and that was like cool. one of the best days ever. It was so funny and just yeah, I love live performance and um musicals definitely probably is my favorite to to go see um but live performance in general is just so fun like traditional you know straight plays um stand up improv like I love it all yeah I find uh I I enjoy musicals more so than anything Um, yeah and I saw uh, last year a company do In the Heights I've seen Mm. Uh, the main girls musical. Um, and uh, how do you feel about people using their phones during things, during these things? And also, uh, I also want to know about your feelings on people eating during a Broadway play. Eating. Yeah. They do eat, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't, that's so interesting. I mean, like I, I sort of understand like like a drink or like a cocktail or something. I know, right? That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. But eating is, I don't know. There's something really, I believe, maybe this is old school, but like sacred about a live performance and like the respect factor of these these are live actors, you know, performing their hearts out and they worked so mm-hmm. hard. So I think, yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of like phones or anything. It's live performance. It's, you yeah. know, it's defeating the purpose of it being special one time only you know, I, I think exactly. it takes the magic away from it a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty old guy. I think just like, just don't do anything for, for that time. But yeah. I, I'm Freaking. so glad. Yeah. 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 I yeah. saw um, Chicago last year uh, here in Atlanta uh, at mm-hmm. our Fox theater and, um, and this theater, you know, it's, it's an older theater and I like to, when I see a play or something, I like to get dressed up. I like mm-hmm. to put on, you know, at least a pair of pants. Yeah, like, at, least, at the very least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like some chinos. Let me throw on yeah. some chinos and yeah. a shirt and I'm going to get in there. I'm going to have a nice time. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I was at Chicago and uh, there were these two women behind us and this guy was on stage and he's a handsome guy. Sure, why not? But they kept <laughs> talking about him and like oh. whispering the entire, the entire show. And then uh, to a point where, I and the person I was with, uh, we complained to an usher and then they moved us up to the pit, luckily enough. Um, oh, but I don't I don't want to end up 
you know, like uh, 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 in a place where uh, Lauren Bur- Bobert is talking over Beetlejuice, right, and, right. Uh, and and vaping and stuff like that. That's uh, a yeah. that's gross and disgusting. It totally, and it's it, and it's a, in a way like a form of heckling almost. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just I don't know. I think it's really disrespectful. Um, right. It, yeah. Even in movie theaters, I feel like people have more like etiquette. I mean, some yeah. you know are expected to. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm a not a fan. <laughs> now, uh, tell me about uh, Pillow Talk. It's a mm. uh, is your 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 chat show where, mm-hmm. you're, where you're sitting, where you're laying with people in bed. Yeah, yeah, li- yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, yeah. look at that. There we go. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's a talk show, chat style show, um, where we lay in bed together and uh talk about things that you probably normally wouldn't talk about in a more traditional interview style Mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of it was uh, um, my videos and online personality isn't me it's a lot of different characters I don't really show my own personality and I just kind of wanted to and a lot of the guests that I have on the show are also um, social media personalities or comedians and right. i just thought it would be a cool opportunity to show a different side of us yeah. um yeah and i love the i love laying in bed and i love oversharing they're like my two favorite things so it's kind of just it's based off of that <laughs> now why why don't you feel um i don't want to use comfortable but why why don't you feel uh, like it's necessary for you or you, you have the ability to uh share yourself uh who you are and your videos. I know that again, you said you only have 30 to 60 seconds to do something funny, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, there, you, I still think you have room to really show sides of who you are. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think it really is just like based in fear. Like I think mm-hmm. I'm just scared. Whereas if I'm posting a character online and it bombs or people don't like it, then I can be like, okay, so true. Like that's not me. Mm-hmm. Like that's a character. I don't like her either. But if I'm posting myself and it gets, you know, hate comments or bad, I think I would just take it a little too personally. I think it's just like this fear thing where I'm like, well, that, that's me and my story. And that's what's scary about stand up too. It's like my stories. And so it took me a really long time to get into that as well. So I, I think it really is just like myself getting my in my own way. I think I'm just too scared. Right. It's scary. That makes yeah. sense. And, you know, I, uh, I think that comes, we're, we're both young uh, people. I'm a little bit older than you, but I think that comes with time. And uh, I mean, you're already breaking through so many barriers by going on a stage <laughs> and telling jokes and then Thank also you. posting yourself and uh, uh, online and doing mm-hmm. these things. Cause how many people can't do that because they they're frozen with fear and, mm-hmm. you know, you, you just have to, continue pushing past this this idea that that you're afraid and uh because you know i mean i think in a couple of years you're going to be able to to do it and and you mm-hmm. know this is me and uh uh i took six dumps today don't know right. that one, but you know that but that but that's the thing you know you know totally yeah you're going to be able to to say that uh uh things along those lines um yeah this it's it reminds me a lot of uh uh this pillow talk uh it reminds me a lot of um late night hosts wherein that when you know let's take seth myers for instance when he's doing a joke uh performing a joke i don't know whatever when he's <laughs> when he's doing yeah. an aside on uh uh a, a closer look or um um uh the uh, uh any other thing on his show mm-hmm. and he says you know my nephew you know took 70 dollars from my wallet a nephew didn't really take 70 dollars from his wallet he's just doing doing a little uh, a, bit. a bit so mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. you you get that and you know it's just gonna take a little bit more time and uh eventually this is this is all gonna be a thing of the past to you and you're gonna be yeah. doing pillow talk style things alongside your uh tiktok posts and it's you're gonna be essentially one person as much as you want to show people uh those different sides of you mm-hmm. well thank you <laughs> thank you yeah i i mean i hope so and i think Pillow talk definitely has um, helped break the ice of that, you know, like mm-hmm. broken the ice with it. And um, I mean, stand up as well is also helping me feel more comfortable in my voice and in Paige's voice, not necessarily like Paige as a performer voice. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I, I definitely feel it. And it's, it's a really awesome and like freeing feeling to be able to feel confident in your own voice, especially online. I think that is, um, it's really exciting. Yeah. So hopefully it just, you know, I keep getting more and more comfortable with it as time goes on. That's good. Mm-hmm. What's uh what's your uh, Spotify rap look like? <laughs> this is so embarrassing, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. So I just started using Spotify. Okay. Like a few, maybe like six months ago. Cause I was always an Apple music girly because mm-hmm. it was just easy for me for some reasons, like the Spotify layout at first was like really confusing. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just like the stubbornness in me. So my Spotify wrapped is like basically the past, you know, couple months of just me listening to the same five songs over and over again. Um, but so I'm like, I don't like these artists are cool, but I don't know. So my, <laughs> my Apple music raft or whatever yeah, that, that is counts. yeah that counts I just looked at it I can't remember I think my top one was Frank Ocean okay and then um and then I think it was like Dua Lipa and Tame Impala and um this band it's called they're called the main it's like this alternative rock band so I'm kind of like okay. all over the place a little yeah, bit yeah. yeah yeah I dig it I dig yeah it. what about you what's what was your top um, well, uh, I am like you. I was not loyal to one uh, thing this year. Uh, okay. I have I have Sirius XM. That's not the main one. I used YouTube uh-huh. music, but I also got a trial of Apple music this year as well. Mm-hmm. So on uh, they didn't have enough data on me for that one. So <laughs> it literally said it literally said we only have 30 percent of your data. I was like, All right, fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah. for YouTube music, uh, it was top one Taylor Swift, uh, Pearl Jam, The Weeknd. And, uh, oh God, I forgot who the last two were, but yeah, I'm mostly, oh. uh, it's a lot of, you know, classic rock, uh, hip hop and, uh, uh, my sweet girl, Tay Tay. Sweet, I love her. sweet love Tay. Her so yeah. That's amazing. That's like all over the place too. I think she was in my top, if not my top five, top 10 for sure. Yeah. yeah. Or do you consider yourself a Swifty? I don't like using that term i hate using that term because i don't want to be i don't want to be considered one of the people that are like sending threatening notes to people uh (laughs) if they don't like taylor swift but i love i love her so much i Mm -hmm. saw her in nashville this year i saw her in san jose uh during the last tour so yeah i'm uh i'm 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 all in on taylor that's amazing yeah i mean how could you not america's sweetheart she and she's one of the best like she's one of the best <laughs> songwriters one of the best singers and mm-hmm. the, and people don't understand they say <laughs> stupid things like oh she only writes about boys and everything she's not first she does not do that Second, <laughs> first of all no <laughs> yeah and there, there's other i can name 40 other artists from the past 50 years who have li- who literally have done the same thing more so than her yeah 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 what is that why does she, she get so much hate for that it's such a bummer and also just not true yeah like you were saying yeah Oh, she's she's just successful tay. it's uh, yeah right that's the thing yeah she's just successful so people have to find a reason to not like it yeah exactly it's mm-hmm. ridiculous uh <laughs> well Paige, i don't want to take up too much of your time uh i'm glad that we had this chance to talk uh you you're doing great work uh, mm-hmm. i also like supporting women of color it's uh fantastic mm-hmm. to have you out there uh kicking ass on tiktok and uh hey. you know reposting those things on instagram i know yeah <laughs> yeah you're, you're not wrong in that yeah. <laughs> uh but uh thank you for sitting down with me again mm-hmm. and uh yeah you're uh, you're amazing keep up the good work and i, I can't wait to see where you go usually i'm not a huge fan of uh, uh, uh influence and everything but mm-hmm. man you're so damn funny like you're just so you're good at what you do thank you oh my god yeah. thank you yeah. so much take that take that to heart i don't say that to you everybody will. i don't thank explicitly you. come out and compliment people so. <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate it this has been so fun it's so yeah. good to meet you like face to face <laughs> yeah meet you it's good to meet you as well uh you yeah. have a good rest of your day and a you fantastic well. weekend okay thank you All you right. too bye bye <laughs>